Getting rewards for your efforts is something that isn't a new thing in life or gaming. In life, when you work hard, you want to be rewarded for that work that you put in. When it comes to MMO games or games in general, oftentimes gamers feel the same way. If they have been grinding that activity or trying to reach a certain score or level in an MMO, they want to be rewarded for that effort. Today in this video, I want to talk about the reward structure in ESO and why I think there needs to be a change. I'm also going to propose my theoretical reward structure that I think Zenimax could implement to make activities more rewarding for players of all levels. Real quick, thank you to my patrons and YouTube members. I'll have more on that at the end of the video. Last week, we talked about how ZeniMax has recently made the month of April's login reward something that we haven't seen before. This month, we are getting a mount, we are getting a house guest, tons of XP scrolls, and a lot more. This spawned the conversation of why doesn't Zoss do this more often? I went on to talk about how I think this needs to be a normal thing, but it shouldn't just stop right there. I bring up the quick notion that the reward structure in ESO needs serious work in that video. And there have been various other content creators that also feel the same way about ESO needing to be more rewarding at all levels. Something that really brought this to light was the account-wide achievements with Update 33. I personally love account-wide achievements, and I think that they are something that should have been in the game since day one. But other players don't like them at all because they feel like their achievements don't mean anything thing anymore and there's no reason to play other characters. I personally don't really get that because I don't really want to get any of the achievements in ESO or multiple characters ever. I mean that just sounds really terrible in my opinion and just not fun but I, I know some people like that and I do understand their gripe. The reason however they feel that way isn't just because of account wide achievements though it's because of the ESO's reward structure. It's just not rewarding enough. There isn't enough visible achievements or earnable things that say, oh wow, look at what this person did in the game. Now, don't get me wrong, ESO has rewards. They have motifs, right? You see all these outfit styles right here. They have motifs. They have, you know, housing, which, you know, you see here. They have titles. They have dies, right? They have all of this good stuff. If we look here at my character screen, you'll see that there are a ton of titles that I can click from. But the thing is, motifs are visible, but you can buy these with gold. Like this motif right here, you can buy all of this with gold. You don't have to earn it or earn it from a drop. You can buy this with gold, which lowers the value of someone that actually gets the lucky drop for them. Dies are really neat because those are earnable and buy achievements. So I like that. So these dies are something that I actually did in the game to achieve this. Housing items, again, can be earned, which is cool, but a lot of them are bought with gold or actual money uh, in the crown store, which in my opinion is really annoying. And titles are things that really don't mean anything because if you actually just remove your uh, nameplates, you don't even see people's titles. So it's one of the most useless things I think in the game because I never see people's titles a lot of times. Even if I don't have the nameplates active, I don't even I, I don't even bother like to read them. Don't even get me started on the mounts because the mounts in the game are non-existent when it comes to earnable ones. Besides getting the event mounts and besides getting the antiquity one, there's really no earnable mounts in the game. And this is where the problem really compounds itself with ESO because ESO is a horizontal progression based game. What that means is, is you don't have any vertical progression essentially because the item level is capped at CP 160. Everything that drops at that level is going to be at that level and after that level. No matter if you're 3000 CP, it's going to be CP 160. All of your progression is spread out on a horizontal plane. You have dungeons on there, housing, achievements, questing, overland content. It all lies on this horizontal plane because they are all at the same level of entry. Now, you could say that above that plane slightly is you have vet dungeons dungeons or vet DLC dungeons. And then above that plane slightly, you have vet trials, but that is the very top of the ceiling. There is nothing above vet trials because when you complete vet trials, which a lot of people are not going to be able to do, there is nothing vertical about the game. Why do I mention this? Well, in vertical progression based MMOs, like most of them, the grind and the reward is getting that higher item drop or the better item roll. It pushes you to keep playing and grinding the game. But the things that those vertical games can have is uh, in their horizontal aspects, for instance, wow, they have tons upon tons of mounts and cosmetics to grind for on the horizontal plane that you can't buy. It gives players that want to stay on that horizontal plane something to do if they don't want to vertically progress. Same thing with Lost Ark. You could do all the Adventure Tome stuff in Lost Ark and earn mounts and cosmetics instead of vertically progressing your gear score if you want to. You can do that. Same with RuneScape. You could get skilling capes, pets, and all types of cosmetics without getting to max level and doing raids in God Wars. 
ESO does not have this. The horizontal plane has most of the content in ESO, but the content is a one and done type of content. There's no depth to the content on that horizontal plane. There's no reason for me to run pledges for the Undaunted because most of the time, I have every monster set that I need on my builds. There's no reason for me to go kill any world bosses or public dungeon bosses unless I wanted to collect all the armor and weapons of a zone, but most zones, I don't wanna do that. There's no reason for me to grind a specific dungeon when I don't need anything in it. It's getting to the point where there is really no reason for me to grind motifs because you can just buy them with gold. That is a problem. So how do we fix this? Zenimax needs to restructure the rewards and here's how I think they can do it. First off, leveling in this game doesn't really hold any weight. Yeah, you want to be CP 160, you want to get to the gear cap, and you want to be above 300 CP to do harder content, but once you hit above 500 to 600 CP, CP really starts to not matter, because in the grand scheme of things, you're going to be able to get to 1800 CP, which is essentially where you can get every single CP star eventually, and then after that, you have another 1800 CP that really mean nothing, because the CP cap is 3600. Why doesn't DOS give weight to actual leveling? So starting off, to kind of restructure the leveling rewards. So why don't, starting out, you get a mount, then at level 25, you get another mount of your choice. At level 50, you get an even cooler mount for reaching level 50. And at CP 160, you get a mount that has color hue uh, that represents the champion point trees, okay? You can pick one of them. Then, at every 100 CP levels, you get yellow upgrade mats of your choice for crafting, and you get a currency called Constellation Dust. This Constellation Dust can be used at the Champion Point vendor in different cities. I'll get to that more in a few minutes here, but every 500 CP levels after that, you get a consumable item that is called the Aura of Constellation. This is something that can be used on armor or weapons to give it a starry constellation effect. Every 1000 CP levels, you can get a skin that is a constellation looking effect. And every and each of those can be three colors of the champion points the you know blue the green and the red so you have you know the, like the warfare the fitness and the craft right then every 1200 cp level so that's a third each time you get a mount that is a constellation of colors of each champion point tree so a green one a blue one and a red one at max cp you get a grand mount that is a mix of the colors that have the apex radiant animations. But what this structure does for leveling is it allows you to gain rewards and have a reason to level. Now, beyond CP 3600, you can earn rewards like the constellation dust and resource mats, but it won't just show up on your level in the game. It's just kind of like something you can continually grind for, kind of like the levels, uh, season levels in Destiny. So you can keep grinding for more mats, for more dust, but what the dust is used for is at the vendor I was speaking of. This vendor could have various cosmetic items that you can spend your dust on. Those could be housing items, those could be mounts, those could be resources, those could be skins, all types of different things, but it rewards you for grinding levels. If you just wanna grind levels, you can get cool things with it. It brings value to leveling. Next, I've already talked about this in my Overland Zone vendor video that I'll have linked in the description. So I'll have that there for you if you wanna watch it, but to make Overland horizontal content more appealing, to grind and deeper, you could make an instance-based overland experience that would allow players to opt into a new game plus mode or a veteran mode once they've completed the normal one. So for instance, if I go to Somerset and I've completed everything in Somerset, all the quests, I can activate the veteran mode and I can do this on veteran and it's harder. But what that allows you to do is anytime a player completes an overland activity in that mode, you could have the activity drop overland zone tokens. These tokens are specific to each zone and each zone has its own vendor. These vendors sell cosmetic items as well that allow it to be shown to other players. This will allow players the ability to continually grind overland content for more cosmetic items and give them a reason to do that. The next reward structure that we could overhaul is the achievement. Okay, so for people to actually feel like they have earned something because achievement points really have no value in this game, you can't use them for anything. Why don't we have more visible cosmetics tied to just random achievements? I know that there are skins for very difficult achievements in this game and very few mounts as well, but I always give this example. What if you kill a thousand skeletons or undead? Why don't you just give us an undead mount or a follower or a pet that's undead themed? That way people know like, hey, this is something that they earned. <clears throat> they didn't buy this. This could span into many different things, by the way, but it's just a quick example. Also along the lines of achievements, for those players that don't feel value in achievements now, why not make an achievement point vendor? So you unlock certain items that you can get from the vendor when your account hits certain achievement point thresholds. So like if you do all the veteran dungeon achievements, you get a, a ridiculously cool thing for that, right? 
Uh, if you do all the achievements, you get some insane rewards for that, right? This brings value to doing achievements on all your characters to try to get all the achievement points that you possibly can. These are sort of like the Ignea tokens and Lost Ark because it, that is account wide as well, but that would bring some value to people that want to do achievement point grinding. Now, moving on to the random drops. I think that these need to be revamped. So this could be anything from dungeon bosses to world bosses to dolmens. Why not have a random drop chance to get a rare mount from each dungeon boss themed to the dungeon? I don't know what the drop chance should be, but you know that I would grind that dungeon if there was a rare chance for that. And maybe there's a weekly limit to how many times you can do that dungeon each week or that mount drop on each character. I'm not really sure the exact parameters behind it but ESO needs more randomized drops from bosses and content that cannot be sold or bought because that immediately brings down the value and prestige of actually getting the item. Can you imagine someone just getting lucky or even someone grinding their butt off in a dungeon for a rare mount that they finally get and people are like oh that's so sick you know where did you get that from and they tell them the dungeon that they got it from and then those those people go and farm and grind that dungeon. That gets people excited. It gives you a reason to go back and do the dungeons and the content in the game because there's something tied to that that is rewarding. And the cool thing about ESO is the fact that it is horizontal progression based. Those things are always going to be somewhat of a challenge because they're going to be scaled to your level. That's why I think ESO is really dropping the ball with these rewards. Some other examples of things you can earn cosmetically could be player auras, player orbs like the sanctuary and ebon armory item effects. You could earn weapon augmentations. You could earn different skins for pets, different effects for abilities that are like recolors. You can earn different way shrine teleport animations. You could earn trims for your armor, etc. Now for the questers out there, you could earn different quest points like in RuneScape where those quest points would unlock certain cosmetics at a quest vendor. So if your goal is to complete every quest in the game, you'll get some ridiculous reward for that. And it gives you reason to grind every quest out. And with these thresholds, just like the champion points, you could have every fixed number of quest points that you get in game, give you items, cosmetics, like skins, mounts, house, a uh, house possibly, even auras, maybe some crafting items. This allows those players that want to do casual playthroughs something to grind for as well, or just someone starting out. So like if someone finishes their whole Aradon questline zone, they get something for it, right? Like they get, they get some cool things for it. Now, I know that there are some quest rewards in the game, but I think we should add some more to the game to make it even more appealing to casual players as well. Now, for the competitive players out there, or the hardcore players, maybe adding some more rewards to like the leaderboards for like, you know, PvP or trials or battlegrounds or something like that, right? Like that would be cool because you could get like in Lost Ark, there are some really cool PvP ones where you have like ranked divisions and uh, they give you a mount and like some other really cool cosmetics if you end up in that division at the end of the season. I think that would be really neat for like the competitive or hardcore players to give them a reason to keep playing and grinding. And then just having an endless horde mode in ESO, I think is something that the game needs. Just crushing your enemies endlessly for currencies, maybe to spend in certain vendors, uh, to give you cosmetics, to make your gear better. Anything like that, I think would be really helpful for improving longevity of the game and replayability of ESO. But like I said, if you wanna watch my Overland content video, it'll be up here in the cards. I kinda go in depth on that, but I'd love to hear your comments below and what you think about this system and what you think about my reward structure. Let me know what you think. And you can check out any other guides here in the cards as well and thank you again to my patrons youtube members check out my twitch stream tuesday through friday you can check out our website probably and our discord is down below all of that is in the description but again y'all thank you again for watching remember to have faith be great and i'll see you on eso